Hello everyone, welcome to another video of class 10 general science and today we are going to discuss about chapter 10 which is light, reflection and refraction and in this video in the part 1 we are going to discuss everything about reflection, what are spherical mirrors and how images are formed by the spherical mirrors, what is the mirror formula, what is magnification and all of these will be covered today in this lecture. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So we are starting off with reflection. Now what is reflection? As we have all studied from class 8 or 7 onwards that reflection is bouncing of light from a plane surface and it may not be a plane surface, it may be a rough surface but in order to form an image we need a plane surface, a very polished surface like a mirror because light is reflecting from this whiteboard, light is reflecting from the walls around us but we cannot see the image of ourselves or any object in the walls. So in order to view an image, we need a very polished surface, for example, a mirror, a glass mirror. Okay, so reflection means you will have a surface, light will come and it will bounce off it. Okay, that is reflection. So every object which we can see, which are visible, actually allow light to fall on them and then bounce off. Now there are two important laws of reflection. So what are the laws of reflection? The number one law is that the incident ray means the ray that is coming from the object. There is an object from this object, an incident ray. The first ray that comes and falls onto the surface. So this is the incident ray. The ray of light that bounces off from the surface is the reflected ray. So this is our reflected ray. So the incident ray, reflected ray, the plane or the point of contact with the surface. Also, the perpendicular drawn here, if I draw a perpendicular here, this is called the normal, okay. So the incident ray, the reflected ray, the normal, all these three lines lie on the same plane at the point of incidence. This point where the incident ray will meet is called the point of incidence. So the first one is the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal, they all lie on the same plane at the point of incidence okay this is our first law of reflection second law states that the angle formed by the incident ray with the normal this incident ray is forming an angle with the normal this is called the angle of incidence and also the reflected ray is forming another angle here called the angle of reflection so according to the second law of reflection, it says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. These two angles will always be equal if the surface, I mean not if, whether it is a plane surface or it is a rough surface under any circumstances, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are always equal. So this is the very basic point or the very basic theory that we should know about reflection. Once we know this, we will go into a more advanced state in this class 10 chapter where we talk about different types of mirrors. So what we have studied in our previous classes, in our younger classes, we have studied about a plane mirror and how a plane mirror forms an image. In this class, we will study about spherical mirrors. Now spherical mirrors means what? Means there is a sphere which is a polished surface, a mirror which is a sphere. If I cut this sphere at this point, Suppose the interior of the sphere is the polished surface. Okay, the interior is the mirror. If I cut this mirror here, then I will be left with this portion. And this portion is called a spherical mirror. So if the reflecting part, reflecting part means the part through which light will reflect and form an image. So if the mirror is spherical and the reflecting part is inside, and the non-reflecting part is outside this is called a concave mirror okay concave mirror and the reverse means the same thing spherical mirror this time the reflecting surface is outside and the non-reflecting surface is inside this is called a convex mirror okay so a concave mirror and a convex mirror and we will discuss dig in detail elaborately how this concave and convex mirror form an image. So in order to refresh our memories from previous classes, let us look into how an image is actually formed. So a plane mirror as we all know 
forms an image whose size and distance of the object is same as the size and distance of the image. So if the mirror is here and the object is here, the size of the object and the size of the image will be same and the distance from the mirror and the distance from the distance of the object from the mirror and the distance of the image of the, from the mirror will be equal. So if object is here of this size, the image will be of the same distance on the other side and it will be the same size. Now since the image is formed behind the mirror, right, if here is the mirror and I am standing here, I will see my image here. So it is not in the real world, right. This is the mirror, we are forming an image behind the mirror. Behind the mirror there is no real world. So that is called a virtual world. So the image formed at the virtual world is called a virtual image. So any image formed by a plane mirror is a virtual image. And when is an image formed? That is the very crucial aspect you need to understand because when we are going to draw the ray diagrams of the convex and concave mirror, if you don't understand where the image is formed, then you will be confused and you will get to know why. So let's see if I have a plane mirror, well, this is the reflecting side, this is our non-reflecting side. I have an object here and the object, from the object, infinite number of rays of light will come out. Like if I am the object, infinite number of rays are coming out. Now obviously we will not be drawing all the rays because if we start drawing all the rays, we will get so much confused that it will be hard for us to get the image. So we focus on only a few one or two rays so that it becomes easier and it becomes clear on the eyes to understand how the image is formed. So for example, a ray of light that comes here, this is the incident ray and it will get reflected. How reflected? If we draw a perpendicular here, that is our normal, this angle and this angle must be same. So the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection must be same. Now the ray of light has gone in this side. Means Coming from the object, it is bounced back into the real world. Let us take another ray, for example. We can take it in different ways. For example, we have taken another ray that comes here, and by forming an angle with the normal, it will again go out like this. Okay. So from this very instant, it is very clear that these are diverging rays. They will never meet. They will only go further apart from each other. So if they are not going to meet in the real world, then if we trace them back, if we trace them back. At some point, they will meet in the virtual world. Okay, this point of intersection where remember this clearly. Okay, listen to me clear, clearly. The point where the reflected rays will meet is where the image will be formed. Okay, so two or more reflected rays, wherever they meet, either in the real world or in the virtual world, either in front of the mirror or behind the mirror, wherever the reflected rays will meet. That is where the image is formed. So since the two reflected rays meet here, the image is formed here. Why am I putting more pressure on this statement? Because see, this is another point where two rays meet. But what is this point? This one is an incident ray. And this one is a reflected ray. So if incident ray and reflected ray meet, they don't form an image. So it is very important for you to remember this, that since two reflected rays are meeting here, that means the image will be formed here. And obviously, this distance and this distance will be equal. And the size of the object and the size of the image will also be equal. So this is how an image is formed by a plane mirror. Now, when we look into a spherical mirror, there are a few things that we must know about a spherical mirror before we move into the ray diagram. So, let me draw a rough diagram of a spherical mirror. And let us try and understand what are the parts of a spherical mirror. So, if I take... Say for example, a concave mirror into example. So sometimes people get confused as to which side, which one is concave and which one is convex. So the best example is take a spoon. When you take a spoon, the spoon's head is like this. So the inner surface through which you scoop up your food, that surface is concave. And the back of the spoon is convex. Okay, concave goes in, convex goes out. So front of the spoon, from where you eat is concave and back of the spoon is convex okay it's like your belly and your back <laughs> if you have a big belly that means your belly is coming out it is convex and your back which is going in is actually concave okay this is a funny example don't take it seriously okay so now here we have a spherical mirror now as i have shown in the previous section the spherical mirror is actually a part of a sphere 
and every sphere has a center. So this spherical mirror will also have a center. So what we are doing is we are drawing a line straight from here through the mirror. Okay, a straight line. So at this point where the line meets the sphere is called the pole. This is what pole. In short, E. Okay. This line that we have drawn, it is an axis. And based on this axis, we will draw all our line diagrams. This is called the principal axis. Okay. This is our principal axis. Now, this center is called the center of curvature. C for center of curvature. One more important point is half the distance between center and pole. So this is our center, this is our pole, this is the distance between them and this distance is actually the radius, right? Center to the boundary is the, this whole thing is the radius of the circle. So it is also called radius of curvature. Like this is center of curvature, the R is called radius of curvature. If we measure exactly half of the radius, somewhere here, exactly half of the radius, this is called the focus, F for focus. And this length from the focus to the pole, this length is called focal length. Okay. So center to pole is radius of curvature and focus to pole is focal length. That means the focal length is actually half of the radius. So here we get our first formula of the chapter. That focal length is equal to half of the radius. If we change this side, we will get twice F is equal to R. So if you double up the focus, you will get our radius, okay? So I put the diagrams clear to you that the focal length is actually half of the radius. Why is this called the focus? We will get to know very clearly when we draw the diagram because there is a specific meaning to why this point is actually called focus. Why not anything else? Why focus? Focus means you are focusing. Something is concentrated at a particular point. So what is concentrated at this point? Let us see. So if we understand all this, we have a spherical surface, that sphere has a center called the center of curvature, the half of the center and the pole is called the focus, this length is called the radius of curvature and this length is called the focal length. If we are clear with this, let us go ahead and draw some of the diagrams, okay. So what, how to draw a diagram of a, or a ray diagram for a spherical mirror? We will draw for concave and then we will go for convex, okay. So, for example, I have a concave mirror here, okay, and as usual, as I said, I will need the principal axis. This is our principal axis, somewhere will be the center and where will be the focal focus. So, how to draw? When you draw in your exam sheet or when you draw for practice, don't go for freehand diagram. Use a compass and draw this part, okay. So, take a compass, put it in the center and draw the arc. This arc will be your sphere. Measure this length, means from the center, draw a straight line. Measure this length, suppose it is 6 cm, for example, it is 6 cm, then take exactly 3 cm and find out your focus. This is very important for you to do, to do proper measurement because if you don't do proper measurement, your image will not be at the proper place. Okay, and I will tell you in which diagram you will face the most of the problem. Okay, so what we do here? Image, we need the image of an object. So in order to form an image, obviously we will need an object. So where is the object? The object can be anywhere from the mirror. If this is the mirror, the object can be close to it, somewhat far or very far. So the first point where we assume the object to be is at infinity. So our first case is when the object is at, <coughs> sorry, is at infinity. So when the object is at infinity, there are many rays coming from this. I say from any object, infinite number of rays come out. So when we are looking at an object which is infinity, infinity means the object is actually not visible. It is so far away, it may not be visible. So when rays of light come to you from far distance, best example is when rays of light come from sun. The rays of light that come from sun, since the sun is so far away from the earth, it seems like the rays that are coming to us are parallel. Okay, since the distance is so huge, even though the lights will be diverging from the sun, even though the sun from the sun, the lights will be diverging like this. But for a small planet like Earth, these rays of light will seem like they are actually parallel to each other. 
So whenever we assume an object is at infinity, the rays of light that come from the object, we assume them to be parallel rays. So rays can be coming from multiple directions. We will select only two for our reference. Say for example, this is one incident ray. Parallel ray hits the surface of the mirror. Now this is the important part. Any parallel ray that hits a spherical mirror will always, after reflection, pass through the focus. So when this will reflect back, it will pass through the focus. That's why this point is called focus. See, if I draw another ray, parallel ray, ray parallel to the principal axis, very important. This rays should be parallel to the principal axis. Parallel ray will again pass through the focus. That's why this point is called the focus. So any ray of light coming parallel to the principal axis hitting the mirror will pass through this point and this is an experimental find out not like someone has sat down and uh, written some rules it is an experimental finding so since our two reflected rays one from here and the other from here are meeting at the focus that means the image will also be formed at the focus so the image is formed here at this point and as you can see since they meet at this point close to the focus at exactly at the principal axis the point formed is a small dot so it is a point image it does not have any size it is a point image so what is the nature of this image now the image is formed at the focus okay it is formed at focus then it is a real image why real because the image is formed in the real world not behind the mirror in front of the mirror Means if I put a screen here, I keep a screen, then the image will be formed on the screen. Not like a, a plain mirror, where the image is formed behind the mirror. No. This, if here is the image, uh, concave mirror, image will be formed here. Not behind. Not behind, rather in front. So this is a real image. It is formed at the focus. And what is the size? It is extremely diminished. It is extremely diminished. Or in short, we can say it is a point image. A point image. So this is our first diagram when the object is at infinity. Now let us take our next example when the object is visible somewhere close to us. So let us bring the object from infinity a little bit closer. Not as close as center. Let us keep it out of the center. Okay. So let us have our second. It is between center and infinity. Somewhere between center and infinity is visible to us. Okay, so here is our mirror, here is our principal axis. If we draw, or this is okay, I missed the pole here, this will be the pole. So here is the pole, say for example, center is here, then focal length will be somewhere here, focus. Now, as I said, the image is somewhere here. Now, what will happen? See, as I again say, we will select only a few lines, ray of, rays of light for reference, we will not draw all the lines. So from an image, from an object, rays of light will come out from all the parts of the body. It is not like only from one point the ray of light comes out. It comes out from head to toe. So we will not draw all the rays. We will select all the rays from the tip, tip of the object. So the ray of light coming out from the tip of the object can flow in many directions. But for our reference again, we will select the ones that make it easier for us to draw the diagram. So we will select, since we know that a parallel ray always passes through the focus, so let us first draw the parallel ray. A ray that is parallel to the principal axis hits the mirror after reflection will pass through the focus. Please remember, put these arrow marks while drawing the diagram because the arrow marks will tell the teacher when he is taking the paper in which direction the ray is flowing. If you miss this arrow mark, if the teacher wants, he may deduct some marks very much in his hands and it is very right to do so because without the marks, the arrow marks, it is not shown in which direction the ray is flowing. Okay. So incident ray comes, hits and passes through the focus. Next, how to do the second line. We can draw it in two ways. One we can do is let us allow the ray of light move through the focus. What happens after this? So as we know, a parallel ray passes through the focus. Any ray that passes through the focus becomes parallel. Okay, very simple. A ray passing through the uh, parallel to the principal axis after reflection passes through the focus. 
and the ray will pass through the focus after deflection becomes parallel so simple now this reflected ray and this reflected ray they meet here that means the head will now be formed here so if the head is here the tail will be here so our image let us name it ab is now a dash b dash here and see the image has become inverted ulta ulta ho gaya image so the head is now at the bottom and the tail is at the top so what do we get from this diagram what do we understand that when an object is between center and infinity what is the outcome the outcome is see where is the first we need the position where is the image the image is between c and d the image form is between center and focus what is the nature of the image it is again a real image because it is formed in the real world in front of the mirror what is the size it is diminished and inverted it is not straight it is not erect it is inverted ulta ho gaya if this is my marker head and tail this is the object the image will be opposite to it ulta so this is our understanding from this diagram that an object between c and d will have these properties now moving on to the next one and the one that i said keep a close eye on this because this is one of the most important diagrams okay diagram number 3 that gives students most of the headaches because they are not able to draw it properly because their calculations are not right so when the object is at the center when the object is exactly at the center we have brought the object closer now keeping it at the center so here is our mirror here is the non reflecting part this is the pole say for example here we have center and here is the focus and the object is this time at the center when the object is exactly at the center what happens we will draw a similar type of diagram okay so a parallel ray hits passes through the focus okay a line passing through the focus will come like this becomes parallel passing through the focus it becomes parallel if your calculations are correct and if you have drawn it properly you should find the image exactly below at the center see why it is not matching why my point of intersection is not here because calculations are not right of course calculations are not right but what you should get is something like this if i just try to make it out you should get something like should get something like this where the two reflected rays will meet at this point and the object and image will be at the same point object at the center image at the center so in order to get this right you have to be extremely precise with your diagram with your measurements that what is the center if center is x then your focus should be x by 2 if your center is 10 then your radius is 10 your focal length should be 5 if your center radius is 9.5 then your focal length should be 4.7 so this is very important your measurement should be very accurate in order to get this diagram perfect some students follow back method back method means they will draw the object and image first and then they will manage the rays which is not at all an efficient way of drawing a diagram because you are here to learn something not cheat so if you are one of those people who want to cheat and get your marks just for marks you are studying then go ahead i will find many teachers will be teaching you i have personal experience where i have seen teachers teaching back method you will see a video of mine in my channel as well as talking about it so don't go for back method it is completely against the principles of learning okay back method is something that you would do when you can't when you are not able to draw a diagram and you are trying to cheat the teacher okay if you want you can do that is completely up to you but from my suggestion if to my students i tell them never do this never do this okay so keep your measurements perfect so what happens to the image now the image is formed at the center image is also at the center object at center image at center what happens to the nature it is a real image again formed in the real world what happens to the size size is exactly same so it is same size same size and again inverted obviously inverted head is here this time the head formed will be 
okay so same size real image at c and inverted next if we bring the diagram closer i mean the image closer or uh, try say object i'm sorry uh, when the object is placed between c and f between c and f so i'm going to do fast okay here is our pole here is our focus say and here is our center so the object is here now you have got an idea what we are going to do so parallel ray will pass through the oh, i'm so sorry i'm so sorry parallel ray will pass through the focus what happens to the ray of light that passes through the focus it will become parallel so object is formed image is formed outside the center okay if your measurements are correct the image formed will be outside the center where you place the center your image will be outside it so again if you see here if you understand the image now is smaller and the object is larger so before the situation this number 3 when the image object was outside the image formed were smaller when the object came at c they became the same size now as the image is getting closer the object is going further away image is getting further away and it is becoming larger so what happens here it is formed between c and infinity hai na c and infinity ke beech mein it is formed then what happens it is a real image okay and also what happens to the size this time it is magnified the image is magnified magnified image and obviously inverted okay so this is the nature of this going further ahead now when the object will be brought even closer is ko aur bhi samne leke aa jayenge where do we bring it we bring it at the focus now we place it at the focus so point number 5 at focus at focus what happens this is our mirror principal axis this is the pole this is the focus and this is the center now when the object is here what happens now parallel ray passing through the focus now from here i can't draw a ray passing through the focus this will make no sense so what we do we have a second option any ray that passes through the center does not reflect means reflects back on the same path any ray that passes through the center reflects back on the same path so a ray that is going through this okay let's make it easier okay let's not pass through the center because it will in this diagram it will become more confusing let's make it simpler a ray of light that falls on the pole that falls on the pole will come out making the same angle this angle and this angle must be equal so the incident ray and the reflected ray will make the same angle with the principal axis because at the pole the principal axis is the normal remember this no. a spherical mirror this pole and this principal axis they make an angle the angle so this is the normal so angle made by the incident ray and the reflected ray with the principal axis must be same now if you look at this diagram yeah now if you look at this diagram you will see these two rays seem to be parallel rays and parallel rays never meet so if you think if you go back and think of the first diagram that we drew what did we talk about we said when the object is very far away it seems that the rays of light are coming in parallel so now that it seems like it is going in a parallel direction what where should be the image the image is assumed to be at infinity so object at infinity then the rays seem to be parallel so when we can see parallel rays going out that means obviously they will meet somewhere at infinity maybe somewhere at infinity it is an assumption because we cannot see the image so what we get here is the object is formed at infinity theek hai object is at infinity it is a real image of course size will be huge because we don't know what is the size where it will meet wherever it will meet think of the size it will make with the principal axis so it is highly magnified and of course it will be inverted okay this is our next and last one in concave mirror is when the object is brought even closer even closer means between focus and pole so let's bring it between focus and pole between 
F and P. Focus and pull. Last call. Pull, focus and center. So when the object is here, what happens? Again, parallel ray. A ray that is parallel will pass through the focus. Okay? Someone focus. A ray which is at the pole will make an angle and go out like this. Now these are diverging rays. Means they will never meet. So what we can do is we can trace them back. At some point they will meet and here it will form an image. So now see what happens for the first time in all the six diagrams we have seen. This is a virtual image. The image is formed behind the mirror. So a concave mirror can only form a virtual image when the object is between the focus and the pole. And see the image itself is huge. It is increased in size. So this time if we see it is formed behind the mirror. The location is behind the mirror. It is a virtual image. It is magnified and erect. Erect means straight. It is not inverted anymore. And this is an example if you look at, if you have seen your grandfather, uh, any one of your grandfathers using uh, a handheld mirror while shaving, you will see that they hold the mirror very close to their face and they shave. Why do they need to, are they, do you think they have weak eyesight? No. Because they are using a concave mirror. And a concave mirror, when it is placed close to the object, it forms a magnified image. See, if your face is here and the mirror is close to your face, the image form will be larger. So, you will do a magnification of your face. So, when you are shaving, if the image, if the mirror is close to your face, the image form will be a larger one. So, you will see a magnified image and you can shave properly. Similarly, what doctors use, using a spatula, when they put it inside your mouth, this is the reflection of your teeth inside. And that is also a concave mirror. That's why they place this spatula, they put it inside your mouth, close to your teeth. So that your teeth are between its focus and pole. So if your teeth is here, they put the spatula inside your mouth. Spatula is here, your teeth is here. They can see the reflection in a magnified way. The image form will be a magnified image. Okay, so these are some of the real world applications. So here we have seen all the diagrams, the six diagrams possible for a concave mirror. We are left with convex mirror. Let's look into convex mirror and there are only two diagrams. Very simple, only two uh, possibilities with a convex mirror. So let's look into that. Where do you see convex mirrors? We see convex mirrors in the rear view uh, mirror of a car or a bike. Rear view means the mirror that is used to see behind the car, what is in, in front and in the top, at the top. You will see the mirrors, they are used to see behind the car. So, for a convex mirror, we have two possibilities. One is at infinity. If the object is at infinity. So here is our mirror. This time the shining side is outside. Here is the focal length, uh, principal axis. Now since the object is here, there is no focal length of pole here because the focal length of pole will be behind. The sphere is in this way. So center will be here. Now this center is of no use to us because we are not placing the object anywhere here. So location of object will be outside. So first is infinity, means it is not visible. So as we have done in the previous diagram, the rays will be parallel. Rays will be parallel. Now, in this side, we will have, obviously this is the pole, this is the focus, and this is the center. So what do we know? A ray of light passing parallel to the principal axis will be passing through the focus. But here, it, it is not reflecting, it is a mirror, so it will reflect back. So in what, where will it reflect? In which direction will it reflect? It will reflect in such a way, in such a way that if we trace the reflection back, it should meet at the focus. Similarly here also, it will reflect in such a way that if we trace it back, it should meet at the focus. Any parallel ray will reflect in such a way that when you trace the ray back, it will appear like, it will appear like the ray has come out of the focus. Understand? It will appear like this come out of the focus. So that's why parallel rays should be brought back to the focus. So now virtual image is formed at the focus. Since they will never meet here, these are diverging rays. Diverging rays will never meet. So at the back, they seem to meet at the focus. And that's why in this case, a virtual image is formed. Where is it formed? At the focus. And what is it? It is a point image. Okay, point image, virtual image, that means the size is highly diminished.
This is one case. What is the second case? At the principal axis. Since there is no point of reference here, we can place it anywhere and it will give the same result. So place the object anywhere you want, you will get the same result. So here is our pole, here is say for example focus and here is the center. So a ray of light passing parallel after reflection will pass through the focus, it will appear to pass through the focus. A ray of light which is passing through the pole will make the same angle and come out. Now again these are diverging. So we will place it back and it meets here. So see how the image is formed. The image is formed in the virtual image. It is a smaller image and between pole and focus. So wherever you place the object, it will always be formed between pole and focus. You can try it at home, place it anywhere, place it anywhere you want. You will get the same result. So it is a virtual image. It is a diminished image, but erect image. It is straight up, it is not inverted, this is straight image, inject image and it is, uh, I mean, between pole and focus, formed between pole and focus and that's why you will see, whenever you see any object on the rear view of a mirror, a huge car appears this small. Why? Because the image formed is always diminished. The size of the image is always smaller than the size of the object. So in your ORVMs or your rear view mirrors, you will see that the car or vehicle behind you seems small. You can see the whole of the car. You can since why is this mirror used? Because they have a huge range of view. If the mirror is like this, then objects from top to bottom, everything it can capture in the mirror. Whereas concave mirror have a closed point of view. They can capture only a few items in this zone. Okay, they will not be able to capture everything. But these mirrors, convex mirrors, they have a huge range. This is the mirror, this is the surface from this point to this point, everything it can capture. So that's why these are used in the rear view of a mirror, of a mirror. So here is everything about concave and convex mirror. We have seen their ray diagrams, one of the most important parts, and you should learn this because in class 10 or in your 11 and 12, you will be having good use of these diagrams when you study about light. Yeah, very small portion, but again, you will be able to use this properly if you know the basics of this that you will learn in class 10 that I taught you right now. Now, after we complete this, we we'll go into the mirror formula. The final part for lecture today. What is the mirror formula? The mirror formula is 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 1 by n. What is u, v and f? u is the object distance. v is the image distance. And f is, as we know, it is the focal length. So if I have a mirror here, this is my focus, this is my center, and suppose I have the image object here. So, and as we know the diagram, this is our diagram. What is the object distance? The object distance is measured from the point of contact of the object to the pole. So this is our U. Object jaha pe hai, baha se pole tak, jo distance hoga, that distance from the object to the pole is the object distance. And you similarly from the image to the pole, this is our image distance. Image ke point se pole tak is the image distance. And focal length you know from the focus to the pole. This is our focal length. So this is the mirror formula, and there is a formula for magnification. Magnification means how much has the how many times has the image magnified. If the image is larger, then there will be one table magnification, means result, and if the image is smaller, then there will be different types. So magnification is actually given by h dash by h. What is h dash? h dash is the image height. And h is the object height. So this is h dash, h image object height. And this is h dash. Okay. Image height and object height. Okay. So this is our formula. This can also be expressed as minus v by u. 
So this is the formula for multiplication. We can use either of the one. Either we can use h dash by h or we can use minus b by u. This is our mirror formula. In order to understand some of the signs that we will use, positive and negative, it is very important to understand the sign convention. So let us look for this only. Let us look into the sign convention. Let me show it here. Just as we know, keep it very simple. Sign convention is one of the most important things in this chapter. Okay, if you are wrong with the sign convention, all of your numericals will go wrong. So be very clear with the sign convention. I am going to teach it right now. Pay close attention to it. See, as we know, the x-axis, x-axis and y-axis. This is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. So anything that goes to the right is positive, anything that goes to the left is negative. Anything that goes up is positive, anything that goes down is negative. This is what we know. We have known this from when we have started drawing graphs. Think of the this diagram in the same way. Here is the mirror, here is the principal axis. Think of this as the y axis and this as the x axis. Any measurement you make towards the right is positive. Any measurement you make towards the left is negative. Any measurement you make towards the top is positive. Any measurement you make towards the bottom is negative. So we have three things u, v, and f here. The object is towards the left. We are measuring it towards the left. So object will be negative. Whatever be the value, suppose it is 6 cm, then we will write minus 6 cm because it is towards the left. See, towards the left is negative, just like an axis. The image is also here, it is also towards the left. So V will also be negative because it is towards the left. What about the focal length? F. F is also towards the left. So F will also be negative. So in case of a concave mirror, and in this diagram, the object, the image, and the focal length all will be negative. Whatever is the magnitude, say 5 cm, 7 cm, 12 cm, whatever be the unit, uh, whatever be the uh, value, it will always be negative if it is towards the right. Think of this question h dash and h. h dash means the image, and the image is going down, see, the image is inverted. So we will measure downward, and when we go downward, the sign will be negative. So here, h dash will be negative. What about h? h is going up. h is up and up means positive. So h will be positive. This is how we do sign convention. So suppose the height of the image is found out to be a 2 cm. So h will be positive to plus 2 because it is top going up. And say for example h dash is found out to be 1 cm. But since it is going downward it will be minus 1 cm. So right means plus, left means minus, top means plus, down means minus, as simple as that, okay. So this is all about reflection. The second part of the video would be reflection. So if you want to watch that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the like button because that will help me somehow in order for YouTube to understand that people are actually enjoying the video. So if you enjoyed the video then do press the like button. If you did not enjoy the video, you can press the dislike button as well. Then I will know that I will have to make the content better. So if I am able to help you, kindly subscribe to the channel if you want. And I hope this helped. See you in the next one of light, reflection and reflection. And in the part two, we will be starting about reflection. So thank you everyone for watching. And until next time, cheers.